hi, in this problem we have a definite integral and we have to evaluate it. And we're going to do that by thinking of it in terms of area. So we'll start by doing a graph of the absolute value function. So in general, I'll do a rough sketch here. It looks like a V. It looks something like this. Okay, so I'm going to do a bigger graph down here just so we can be a little more precise. So here's one little arrow and here's another arrow. Then here's negative one, here's one, and here's two. And so if you recall, as long as this function is non-negative, so if you have a function f that's non-negative on, say, an interval, and let's just pretend that it looks like this. Here's A, here's B, here's the function. It turns out that the area under this function from A to B, this orange piece here that I've shaded in, this is actually equal to the definite integral from A to B of f of x with respect to x. And that's the area, right? This is the area. So the definite integral gives us the area in, in this case. So in our particular example, the function is certainly non-negative. So we're looking at two areas. We're looking at one right here, and we're looking at another one right here. And the cool thing about this is that these are both triangles. So what we can do is we can use the formula for the area of a triangle on both pieces. So the formula for the area of a triangle is A equals one half base times height. So for this first triangle over here on the left, um, the base is simply one, and the height is also one. So it will be one half times one times one. So it's just one half. Really cool, right? So this area here of this little triangle is one half. Over here, we have to do the same thing. So we'll use the formula again. So it's one half base times height. So this time the base is two, right? So two is the base. So it's one half times two. Oh, and then the height is different here as well, right? You gotta be careful. The height here is two, right? Because this is the absolute value of x. So by the way, the absolute value of x, the reason I know this height is one, I probably should have mentioned this, is that it's x if x is greater than or equal to zero and it's minus x if x is less than zero. This is the definition of the absolute value. So this line here is, let's say, y1 equals x. And this line here, we can say it's y2 equals negative x. That's how I knew that because the um, base was one, the height was one, right? Because the height is one. Same thing here, right? Um, the base is two, so the height is also two. Because when x is two, y is also two, right? So you get two here as well. Use cancel, so you get two. So to find the definite integral, let's be really pro and write it again like pros do. It'd be the first area plus the second area. So the first area is one half, and the second area is two. So we get one half plus two, which we can think of as a number over two for addition purposes, just a clever trick, right? You, you look at two, you're trying to add it to one half, so you say, hey, how do you write two as a number over two? Well, four over two, and then one plus four is five. So five halves, so 2.5. Yep, that's one way to do it. Or you can just do one half plus two is 2.5, <laughs> or two and a half, same thing. And that's it, that would be the area. Kind of an interesting way to do it. Another way to do this problem, by the way, would have been to break it up into two definite integrals using using this definition, so you could certainly do that. Um, the only reason I did it this way is because um, the directions for this problem that I'm reading um, said to use area. So yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.